Well, Senior Minister of State for Sustainability and the Environment, Dr. Ko Po Kun, says an incoming law on industrial water recycling requirements takes into account the cost impact on companies. It also factors in technology available to the industry. Dr. Ko was addressing MPs' concerns about how the law could hit companies' bottom lines and Singapore's competitiveness. Claudia Lim reports. These wastewater treatment plants and cooling towers have helped Hoya Electronics boost its water recycling rate to 75% this year. It's one of the highest in the semiconductor industry. Before that, the rejected water, after the treatment, we will discharge the water into the public sewer. And now, for all those rejected uh, water, we will go through this, our, this uh, water recycling system to actually recycle and reuse the water for our this uh, production and our operation needs. The maker of computer, television and smartphone parts says it has saved two and a half times more water compared to nearly a decade ago. Their efforts come ahead of a law starting next year, making it mandatory for water-intensive companies in the electronic and biomedical industries to recycle certain waste streams. The law will also require wafer fabrication plants which can hit a recycling rate of at least 50%. It's all in the nation's bid for better water efficiency and sustainable growth in non-domestic water demand. The wafer fabrication, electronics and biomedical industries fulfil both these criteria of having high water demand and producing water streams with high potential for recycling. However, we also recognise that they each use water differently and processes can differ from one facility to another. The requirements will apply to new projects and the expansion of existing plants, but several MPs raise concerns about the impact this could have on individual companies and their industries. We must be mindful of the costs associated with meeting these requirements. In particular, whether having compulsory water recycling will drive up costs of production and will make businesses in Singapore less competitive. Will the new water efficiency requirements result in additional cost burdens for these MNCs? Can SMS also share whether the water efficiency requirements take into account the present technology that is available to maintain water efficiency? In response, Mr Koh says National Water Agency, PUB, factored in the need to balance the recycling rate with economic and technological viability. Too low a mandatory, require, uh, mandatory recycling rate means that we do not maximise the opportunity to achieve a more sustainable water demand growth. Too high a recycling rate may be economically prohibitive for several companies, which will end up eroding Singapore's competitiveness. We are mindful of potentially higher operational costs and land constraints that become especially salient when the recycling rate goes beyond 50% as companies will have, to, will have to adopt more advanced water treatment technologies. To help companies invest their tech to raise water recycling rates, PUB will provide funding and technical support. It recently raised the caps for its Water Efficiency Fund and the Industrial Water Solutions Demonstration Fund from $1 million and $4 million respectively to $5 million each.